Find all our courses at Minded.com. I know it might look like a lot of text in this video, but you will see it's going to be very intuitive and I think you will be quite thankful to these five points in the upcoming chapters because we are going to talk about why do organizations exist and we are going to have five points. The first one to increase the specialization and division of labor, then we have a, a second one, then we have third, fourth, and finally fifth. So let's begin with the first one. And it says, to increase specialization and division of labor. People who work in organizations may become more productive, more productive and efficient, and efficient at what they do than people who work alone. Well, let me bring a short example. Imagine this video. At first, someone needed to write a theory. So at first, uh, someone needed to write, uh, write a theory. Uh, theory, which is the content of this video. Then someone else had to write a book about it. So publish it in the book. So publish a theory. Then there is me who is creating a video out of it. So first step is create a video, is to create a video. And then fourth step, let's say, is to, is to upload the video or publish the video. Upload a video. Now you see, I can be the one who is doing all these four steps alone. So I can be uh, in the process from the beginning until the very end. Well, it would take me probably, let's say one year, one year. So I would be producing basically one video, one video per a year. That's not really productive. I would like to be more productive and more efficient. So that's what happens within the organizations when we are specializing and dividing the labor so that there will be one person who is writing a theories or maybe more. Then there is someone who is publishing them. Uh, then there is me who is creating the videos. And then there is someone who is uploading this video. And then let's say that these people, let's say we can put three guys over here. So over here and they are able to produce, we can say, we can say 100 theories per year because they are really good and efficient at it. And the fact is that the more they are doing this one particular task, the better they are becoming at it. That's the efficiency. Then publishing a theory, well, again, this one is able to do it 100 times per year. I'm able to create 100 videos per year with no problem. And then, of course, this guy is able to publish 100 videos per year. So altogether, we are going to have a 100 videos per year, 100 videos. Of course, in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six people. So here we would have six videos if, the, if there were six people operating individually. So as you can see, that's the first reason why the organizations exist. Let's go to the second one, to use large scale technology. And that is quite intuitive. We are going to have economies of scale when it comes to the organizations and then economies of scope. And let me change my brush. So economies of scope. So what are economies of scale? These are cost savings that result when goods and services are produced in large volumes. So when are produced in large volumes and those are cost savings. So let's give an example of, of making these videos. Well, what do I need? If I want to create a video, if I want to create this video, I of course need, I need a computer. I need a computer, computer, which is worth, let's say $500. Then I need some specialized equipment. I need some, some equipment equipment, which is again worth $500, $500. Now, if I produce one video per day, so if I produce, if I produce one video or generally I produce just one video, how much is this video going to cost me? Well, $1,000. This video is going to cost me $1,000 because I have spent so much money just to create the one video. But what if I produce 
What if I produce 1000 videos? So if I produce 1000 videos, each video is then going to cost me only one dollar. And this exactly is the economy of scale. Uh, you can see that there are some cost savings because I am producing goods and services in large volumes. Then there are economies of scope. These are again cost savings, cost savings, that when an organization is able to use underutilized resources more effectively across different tasks. So across different tasks. So as you can see, I'm a video, let's say video maker. I'm making videos. And then I have a friend who is a programmer. So I have a friend who is a programmer. Now, if you think of it, for, for how many hours per day am I going to use this equipment worth $1,000? Well, let's say for eight hours per day. And then the, the equipment and the computer is quite free and it is underutilized during 16 hours per day. So what I will now do is that I will take all this equipment and this computer and I will lend it to my friend who is a programmer and he is going to use it for another eight hours. And so there will be much more profit or, or much more value created thanks to that we will be able to use these underutilized resources more effectively across some different tasks. Let's go to the third one. And I will just change my brush. Uh, to manage complex organizational environment. So we have some complex organizational environment. And this is quite simple point and you are going to meet this term that uh, the environment around the organizations is complex quite often in the upcoming chapters. So why is it so complex? Basically imagine that there are, if you would like to make a company, if you would like to make a company, what everything do you need to think about? Well, you need to think about some laws, about the demand that there is going to be, how are you going to, uh, who are going to be your suppliers, uh, then how are you going to manufacture your products? So you can see it's, it's a lot of things that you have to think about when you are trying to make a company and it is not possible to be handled by individual. So individual, individual has no chance, has no chance to manage this, this complex organizational environment as, as, as a single person. That's why he or she is going to group into the organization. Then fourth point, we have a to economize transaction costs. And what are transaction costs? Transaction costs are costs associated with negotiating, monitoring and governing exchanges between people. Now let's think about let's think about four four people. So here is a first person, then we have a second one, then there is then there is a third one, and finally fourth one. Now let's imagine that this guy over here has some product. So these are he's producing let's say some great boxes and he's going to sell these boxes to other people. Now, of course, they are not grouped in the organization. They are operating on their own. They are some individual business persons. Now, in order to, if, if, if this person wants to sell this product, he needs to visit this guy and then he needs to visit this guy and also this one. And now they are living all over the city. So it's going to take him one hour to, to travel there, then one hour to travel here and one hour to travel here. So altogether, it's going to take three hours to visit all his potential customers. Now, what happens if, if you sort of group these people into the organization? So let's say this is going to be our organization. And you really can imagine organization as one building in this case. So this is our organization. Now, these transaction costs, which are associated with some negotiating, monitoring and governing exchanges between people are going to be cut. So instead of one hour, it's going to be maybe five minutes, then again, five minutes and finally five minutes. And, you know, thanks to that, we can save a lot and we can economize these transaction costs. 
Then finally, we have this point, which is quite tricky to exert to exert power and control. Well, if these four guys would have been operating individually, essentially the value creation and, and the exchanges would be maybe much smaller or on much smaller case, because maybe on Tuesday, this guy would feel lazy. So this one is lazy on Tuesday and will not be willing to, uh, to do his job. So this guy will be unable to do the business with him and then less value will be created. But if they are within the organization and then let's say this guy is a manager, this is a manager, then he can control all the others. So we, we really need some sort of power and control when it comes to the value creation and organization is a tool that allows us to do so. So those were the five reasons why do organizations exist.